What is up everybody, welcome back. Today is the day. Today is the day we uh, reveal my top 10 bourbons of the year. Actually more like my top 20. I'll walk you through the 10 bourbons I enjoyed this year that just didn't quite make the top 10, but I think are really worth mentioning. Then I will reveal my top 10 bourbons of 2023 that in my opinion was an incredible year for bourbon and American whiskey. Come right back, we're counting it down. It's the Mash and Drum. What's up, folks? I'm Jason C. from The Mastin' Drum. Welcome back to the show. Like, subscribe, and help me hit that 100,000 subscriber milestone for 2024. So let's dive right in. My criteria for my list is simple. I do not include any samples I receive from distillers or viewers in my rankings. I only include bottles that I purchased personally and was able to obtain to enjoy throughout the year or had enough to be put through my end of the year blind tasting. So you won't see any Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. You won't see 13th Colony Double Oaked, even though that's definitely a top five whiskey, but I just wasn't able to get a bottle of that one uh, last year. You won't see Pappy, Daniel Weller, Eagle Rare 25 or anything else I wasn't willing to spend the money on. I also don't include any group or store pick single barrels. So how did I narrow it down? I tasted over 40 bourbons over the course of several days that I enjoyed throughout the year to really help me narrow it down to my top 20 and then eventually my top 10. Of course, I did this all blind. Now the top 20 was scored by nose, palate, finish and value. From those tallied scores, I picked my top 10 and put them through a final blind tasting that was just based on what I like best and let the whiskey speak for itself. Okay, so let's dive into picks 11 through 20 that didn't quite make the top 10. The first bourbon may surprise you, but it didn't surprise me as soon as I tasted it. This is the Evan Williams 1783 Small Batch American Heroes Blend. The beauty of this bottle is not just that it's $26, but it was selected by six veterans who served our country that got to select the barrels in order to go into this blend. This was aged at the Bernheim Rickhouse site and the barrels came from warehouses 1E and 1J. It's 90 proof and it is such a beautiful, easy sipper. It's got a lot of flavor, even at 90 proof. It's got like this kind of nostalgic dusty note to it. Uh, a little bit of like a butterscotch toffee type thing going on. Yeah, it's not gonna blow you away, but for the price and for the story behind it, and the flavor of it at 90 proof, I had to add it to the list, it's number 20. Number 19 was a bottle that made my surprise whiskey list of the year, and it actually did really well in the blind tastings that I did over the course of the last two weeks, and is the Penelope Nine Year Barrel Strength. With Penelope being acquired by Lux Row, which in turn is basically being acquired by Ross and Squibb, this bottle made a lot of sense. I think that Penelope now has some access to some older barrels, in their arsenal, and this nine year, I think, brought it to the forefront. This is a four grain bourbon made with corn, rye, wheat, and malted barley. It was bottled at 109 proof, and I think this was about 90 to 100 bucks. Absolutely stellar release from Penelope. I like this way better than any of the barrel strengths or even the Rio or any of those other bottles. The Rio was very good, but just a little bit too sweet for my palate. However, this one was a killer release. Penelope gets a number 19 slot. Number 18 is the Old Carter Bourbon Batch 14. Absolutely love this bottle when I first tasted it. When I first tasted it, I actually thought this was one of the best bourbons that Old Carter had ever put out, along with the uh, that special Batch 5. I love the sweetness of this. I love how rich it is. Again, this really plays into my palate being, you know, loving toffee and butterscotch and some of that spice. However, when it went into the blind tasting, the finish just kind of fell off a little bit, but it's still a great bottle. It's 200 bucks, unfortunately, and the proof on this one is 117 proof. Coming in at number 17 was one of the darlings of the bourbon universe in 2023. Probably one of the fastest growing brands that we got to taste, which is K. Luke. Jonathan Maisano of Maisano's Fine Wine and Spirits had chosen basically thousands of barrels for his own store and thought it was time to make his own blend. So that's what K. Luke became. Now this is batch five, which contains whiskeys from both Kentucky and Indiana. And what Jonathan Maisano has really been able to do is really just take each release and make a very unique blend. I blind tasted batches four, five, and six. Uh, before I chose number five, I really thought four was gonna run away with it, but five ended up being my favorite. Batch five came in at 119.4 proof and was priced at about 110 bucks. Coming in at number 16 was Maker's Mark Cellar Age, a bottle that everybody on earth was waiting for, especially when they, when they announced that we were gonna get a, an actual Maker's Mark bourbon that was over 10 years old. Generally, all the Maker's Mark products are right in that six year to seven year old range. 
but to taste a Maker's Mark at 12 years old. Now this is a blend of 12 and 11 year. However, it's primarily 12 year old bourbon. Now, as you know, Maker's Mark really doesn't like that tannic oak or heavy oak flavor in their whiskeys. They like that really smooth, weeded profile. So what they did for some of the time, this was aged in a standard Rick House at Maker's Mark, and then it was moved into their limestone warehouse where it was a lot cooler and it could age over time without getting all that tannic oak into the whiskey. Now this was bottled at 115.7 proof. The price for this was about $150 and nobody had a problem paying that much for it. I think this was more not only about a bottle that everybody wanted on their shelf, but a curiosity of to what Maker's Mark can taste like at a high age. I really thought they knocked this out of the park. However, in blind tastings, Maker's Mark just doesn't do it for me. But it's still good enough to grab the 16 spot. Coming in at number 15 was a surprise for me because normally I like the other one that releases with the Shanks each year, which is the Bomb Burgers. But this one I thought was so delicious this year. This is the Shanks Homestead Sour Mash American Whiskey from Michter's. Not many people know, but this is made with actually a pretty substantial amount of rye. And for 2023, Michter's decided to use malted rye in the recipe. They also used two different types of casks to age it, including their signature toast and char profile, and then also a French oak barrel that was made from 24 month air dried wood sourced from a region of France. Now the big hang up on this whiskey every year is it's low proof, coming in at only 91.2. People usually go towards the Bomb Burgers, which is actually bottled at 108 proof, which I think gives it a little bit more punch of flavor. However, this one this year with the combination of French oak and those really sweet flavors, I absolutely loved it. This was about 100 bucks. I got this at retail and it was such a really good sweet sipper and it even made an impression over the Maker's Mark Cellar Age, which really surprised me. And that's why it gets the 15 spot. Coming in at number 14 was the Bartson Bourbon Company Discovery number 11. And you guys know why I love this bottle because basically the distillate in here is mainly sourced from wild turkey. I absolutely love this bottle. I actually thought it would do a lot better than the blind tasting, but it did land at number 14. It was bottled at 118.1 proof and it's a blend of six, 10 and 13 year old bourbons. Like I said, most of it is wild turkey. And the price for this one was 140 bucks. I think everyone got excited because we were finally back to an all Kentucky blend for the Discovery Series. Can't wait to see what they have in 2024, but for 2023, it gets the 14 spot. Now coming in at 13, coincidentally, is the Baker's Bourbon 13 from Jim Beam. I think this bottle this year was an absolutely great reminder of how good some of these Baker's single barrels can be. At 107 proof, 130 bucks, so you're looking at about $10 per year of aging. I actually thought this was a pretty good value too. This has everything you love about Jim Beam at a high age, has some nice oak to it, deep rich caramel flavors, a little hint of dark fruit, and at the proof, even at 107, it still brought a good amount of flavor, which as you could see, why it landed spot number 13. Speaking of Beam, we have number 12. This is the Hardin's Creek Claremont. Now I love this experiment, which was actually dubbed the Kentucky series, which all featured bourbon that was 17 years old. So what they did is they took 17 year old bourbon and aged them at three different Jim Beam warehouse locations in Claremont, Frankfurt, and Boston. All three were laid down with the same mash bill at the same time 17 years ago, but aged them at the different campus locations. Now, obviously I blinded the Claremont, Frankfurt, and Boston, and Claremont ended up being my winner, but honestly, the Frankfurt or the Boston, the Claremont, whatever it is, I think all three of them were winners this year, but when it came to the one I wanted to pick most, this one is what stood out. Even at 110 proof, this bottle came in at about 170 bucks, so again, you're looking at that $10 per year of aging. Jim Beam killed it this year. And just missing the top 10, we have Fourgate Kelvin 60. Fourgate Kelvin 60 features an eight year cast strength bourbon with a 20% rye mash bill that's also been double oaked. This beauty clocked in at 125.6 proof. It retailed for a pricey 200 bucks. It's smoky, it's deep, it's dark, has a lot of spice to it from that 20% uh, rye mash bill. I absolutely loved it, but just missed the top 10. All right, it is that time to find out my top 10 bourbons and whiskeys of the year. Let's start with number 10. Taking the number 10 spot is the Bardstown Bourbon Company Origins Bottled and Bond Weeded Bourbon. This bottle I loved from the first day I tasted it and I thought I could really go head to head with some other popular weeders on the market. For a bottle that costs about 50 to 60 bucks, I really love the richness of the flavors in this weeded bourbon. Even though it's a weeder, it didn't really come across as one. But what really impressed me is the texture on the palate. I thought for a weeded bourbon at 100 proof, it was a great mouthfeel, great texture on the palate. I thought it definitely needed to be a top 10 contender. So it took number 10.
Coming in at number nine was Larceny Barrel Proof, in particular the C923 batch, which after I blinded the uh, all three against one another, A, B, and C, C was the one that easily stood out from the pack. Now the C923 Larceny clocked in at 126.4 proof. These are generally six to eight years old and are only about 60 bucks. I feel like Heaven Hill each and every year has just improved this product. I did not like this bourbon at all when it first released, but over the last couple years, Larceny Barrel Proof has just improved and improved and improved again. This one is now showing just deep, dark, rich flavors, a lot of brown sugar, caramel. You get some of those light sweet notes from the weeded bourbon aspect of it, but usually it's just like a deep, dark, rich flavor bomb. The Larceny C923 takes slot number nine. This one is a surprise. This was my surprise whiskey of the year. I wanted to throw it in the blind tasting to see how it would do. And coming in at number eight, Little Book Chapter 7 in retrospect. I'll admit I've not been a big fan of the Little Book releases ever since Chapter 3, but when I tried this for the first time, I was so blown away. It was so unique, so different, and that's what drew me to this one. Now this happens to be a blend of a lot of different whiskeys that on paper should not work. So the story goes is that Freddie No chose one of the whiskeys he used in all the previous batches of Little Book and then included a new one to create this. Now this came in at 118.1 proof. It retailed for about 150, 160 bucks, depending where you got it, even cheaper in some areas. Uh, but for me, this one was so unique, so rich and had so much flavor to it. It definitely surprised me and was good enough to make number eight. Coming in at number seven is probably my favorite Stag Junior since batch 12 that I've had. This is the Stag Junior batch 22A. Now I know what you're thinking, Jason, I thought these all had to be 2023 releases and I get that, but remember the whole kind of confusion where 22B released before 22A and I did not see this bottle until mid 2023. This particular Stag Junior I love because a lot of the Stag Juniors tend to be very, very sweet, which I know a lot of people love, but every now and again, you get that Stag Junior that has a really nice oak balance to balance all that sweet, super long finish, high dense flavors. And this was no exception. Buffalo Trace absolutely killed it with this batch of Stag Junior. I'm sorry, Stag. I still gonna call it Stag Junior. I don't care. Stag Junior 22A takes the seven spot. Coming in at number six is a bottle that I've had a very weird relationship in 2023 with, and that is the Wild Turkey Generations. Now the story goes for this one is that Jimmy Russell, the legend over at Wild Turkey, his son Eddie Russell and his grandson Bruce Russell collaborated on this, choosing barrels that were nine, 12, 14, and 15 years old, blended to create this bourbon. When I first tried this bottle, I was not a huge fan of it. I did not think it was worth $450, which it is a $450 bottle retail. Now, if you watch my advent calendar when this bottle was put in front of me, it was probably the biggest surprise of the entire advent calendar series. I did not think that that sample was the Wild Turkey Generations. I thought it was like George T. Stagg or something else. The flavors and the depth in this bottle are absolutely incredible. I just think it needed some airtime to get better. Do I still think it's worth 450 bucks? No. However, when it came to the blind tasting, this thing just kept showing up over and over and over. I really didn't want to put a $450 bottle in this top 10, but when it's good, it's good. All right, I went to the top five guys. It is Jack Daniels 12 year. Another distillery that absolutely killed it this year was Jack Daniels. Not only did we get their single barrel barrel proof rye finally available on the shelf, but we got the twice barrel dry. We got a bunch of really unique finished products from the distillery series. And on top of that, they brought a 10 year and a 12 year Tennessee whiskey to the market for under a hundred bucks each. To me, the best of the bunch though was the Jack Daniels 12 year coming in at 107 proof. I could tell you from experience, I got to go and taste this out of the barrel 
uh, when I went to Jack Daniels before it was uh, proofed down 107 proof. And I'll tell you this, even at 107, it didn't lose too much from what we got to taste in the barrel. The flavors here are just incredible. Yeah, you get some of that quintessential banana, but really the butterscotch, the toffee, some of the spice that was here, all the deep rich oak profiles, everything that you wanted that, that you hoped this 12 year would be actually came to the forefront for about 90 bucks. Absolutely killer release from Jack Daniels this year and good enough for number five. Oh, it's getting crazy. Number four, here it is folks, the Michter's 10 year single barrel for the first time ever, even cracking not only a top list of the year for me, but a top 10, the 2023 Michter's 10 year was a special bottle. Coming in at 94.4 proof at a price at about 170 bucks, I think for these these days, this was one of the biggest surprises of the year, just because I have never really thought that much of these Michter's uh, 10 year single barrels because they've been too low of a proof for me and none of them ever really stood out until 2023. Now there's a lot of controversy as to the other, if you didn't have an A barrel, if you had a B, a C, a D or E or whatever the letter was, as far as your single barrel on the neck tag. And yes, I agree in some of the samples I had from other folks that didn't have the 23A single barrels, they had other letters. Yeah, I agree it was not as good as this one. Did they maybe send uh, some of the reviewers and some of the writers some of their best stuff? I mean, it happens. But either way, I absolutely loved this bourbon. This bottle to me was a modern throwback of an old bourbon from like the 70s or 80s. It had this dusty rickhouse funk to it, this really deep rich oak funk to it. I absolutely loved it. Single barrels are gonna be single barrels. Michter's 10 year, congrats. First time ever, you got number four. Now, I thought the Michter's 10 year was gonna be my bourbon of the year until three other bourbons emerged. So, number three, the Four Roses 135th Anniversary Edition. If you guys have been watching the channel over the years, you know that these Four Roses limited editions sneak into the top 10 every single year. I'm just gonna stop saying they sneak in every year because I just think they belong there each and every year. And the 2023 version was an absolute blending masterclass by Brent Elliott. This bottle came in at 108 proof and was a blend of 12, 14, 16, and 25 year old bourbons. Honestly, on the palate, this had everything you want. It had a lot of that high age oak. It had creaminess, it had texture, it had brown sugar, it had a lot of dark fruit, it had light fruit. It had your typical vanillas, your caramels, everything that you would want in a bourbon in one experience on the palate. That's what Four Roses had. This bottle this year was actually 200 bucks, I think because of that 25 year old whiskey that was in the bottle. As you can see, I put a pretty good dent in this bottle already I think it's a little bit less than uh, less than half gone so uh, but it was delicious enough to make the number three spot this is the Elijah Craig C9 23. Now this bottle was an absolute beast this year, coming in at 133 proof. It's a small batch blend with the youngest bourbon in the batch being 13 years and seven months old. The reason why I love this bottle so much because it felt like you were drinking a Rick House. All the oak, all that richness, those smells, those experiences that you feel like you get in a Rick House was all in this bottle. The depth of flavor, the oak, the richness, the sweetness, the brown sugar, the heavy texture of this bourbon and the finish just lasted for days and absolutely incredible bourbon. Now this bottle hit a little controversy with some inconsistency issues. Some folks saying that some of the batches that had different laser codes were better than others and the consistency wasn't quite there. Mainly saying the A23 laser codes were better than the A22 laser codes. Now this particular bottle is actually an A22. That's the one I've been sipping on for most of the year. I do have an A23 that I thought was really good too. I actually liked a little bit better uh, in a blind than this one. But either way, this one was really delicious. I've talked to multiple people who've had either the A22s or the A23s. They like one over the other. It doesn't matter. You know, to me, if you were lucky to get one of these this year at a good price at retail, you got yourself an incredible bourbon and good enough for number two on my list. And here it is folks, the number one bourbon of the year here on the Mash and Drum. It is the Russell's Reserve Single Rickhouse Camp 
Nelson F. This bottle made an immediate impression the first time I tried it. I absolutely loved it, obviously. Yeah, you wanna call me a Wild Turkey fanboy? Go ahead, I don't care. This bottle is delicious. Yes, it's 300 bucks, but like I said, when I got into the top 10, it really didn't matter what the price variance was uh, or the values were. I was just going on what I liked the best and this one just kept coming out on top. Now this bourbon comes in at 117.6 proof and contains bourbon that's 14 years old from those Camp Nelson F Rickhouses. Now most turkey fans love those Camp Nelson Rickhouses, especially Camp Nelson F, because it sits a lot lower than the others and it's actually right next to the Kentucky River, which brings a lot of different air and just I think gives these barrels so much texture, so much funk, and just so much character to it. I actually did think that Michter's 10 year Elijah Cake Barrel Proof was gonna overtake this bourbon, but even though it was 300 bucks, for me personally, <laughs> it was worth every penny. Anytime I could get something this good at the Camp Nelson F from Wild Turkey, I'm going for it. And this one ended up being my number one bourbon of the year. All right, guys, here it is, my top 10 bourbons of 2023. As you can see, I enjoy each and every one of these bottles, and I sh have shared them a lot in 2023, which I really do think was a hell of a year for bourbon. Pricing on the bourbon, I think that's another story. Hopefully that can improve this year in 2024. But if you guys like the video, hit that subscribe button below. Please hit that like button. And if you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram. Let me know what you think about my list. And with that said, like I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. Cheers, see you next time right here on The Master Drum.